Very good. So now welcome everyone to the scientific publishing webinar that we are holding for Eastern Europe. But as I mentioned before, there are people from even um, further than, than Eastern Europe. So everybody's welcome. And we are very happy to hold a session for these many people. And we hope indeed this session is very valuable to you. Uh, let me introduce myself. I am Christiane. I'm the customer consultant for eBooks for uh, many regions, not only Eastern Europe, but the, um, all not India. I've seen India here in the room, but uh, for many of your countries. So if you need a help about books, I, I am available for you. You all have my emails. I am the one sending the messages for you for the session. So welcome very much. But I'm here just with the host, as a host today, because I'd like to introduce our very, very special guest, Jason Mitchell. Let me say a couple of words about him. Uh, he's a senior acquisition editor, so he is the guy, I would say, for cereals and handbooks, responsible for chemistry, earth and environment, physics, economics, content for the, um, and has been working for Elsevier for more than 15 years. He has a whole career focused on the academic STM publishing sectors after completing uh, MPhil in publishing studies at the University of Stirling in UK. Uh, Jason, I would ask you to try to speak very slowly because sometimes the audience is not very, very familiar 100% with the English. And we know the UK accent can be tricky. <laughs> uh, so this is one request. Um, so yeah, I leave the floor to Jason and all have a very good session. Please uh, send your messages if you have questions, try to send by Q&A so I can keep track on it. And uh, yeah, have a, all a good session. Thank you, Jason. Okay, thanks so much, uh, Chris. I really appreciate the handover. And yeah, again, thank you so much for everyone for joining me today. It's um, great to be speaking with you. So as Chris said, my name is Jason Mitchell. I'm Senior Acquisitions Editor um, within the books team of Elsevier. And um, I'll be taking you through uh, today's presentation um, on the books and journals programs. And, and what I'm going to do is just outline opportunities for you and how you can publish with us um, over the next 30 minutes or so. And um, of course, there'll be time to ask question, any questions that you may have at the end. I don't really welcome those. Um, yeah, I will try to speak slowly and, um, and bear in mind so many um, international uh, attendees here and um, if anything is unclear I've, I've got a bit of a Scottish accent please do let me know uh, I'll do my best to explain um, yeah I'd also like to mention I'm going to be talking about various processes and websites and I've got the links to these at the very end of my slide deck and um, I'm sure these can be circulated around afterwards so please don't worry about missing those. Okay so this is today's agenda um, and we're going to cover these points starting with which format is the most suitable for, for the content that you may have been working on or planning to work on. So we're going to divide it into two areas. We're first of all going to cover publication in journals. So how to find the most suitable content, uh, suitable journal, sorry, for, for your content, preparing the article for submission, the submission and review process. And we're going to cover special issues which have grown in popularity and still are. Um, we're then going to move on to talking about publication in books, the differences between books and journals. Um, we're going to just cover the types of books and sub subjects covered by, by Elsevier, um, development and assessment of the book proposal, and preparing the manuscript for submission, and at the very end, the very close, just cover editorial and uh, publishing processes. So that's what we're going to uh, talk about today. Um, thank you for your time and attention. So, okay. This is a slide covering the two formats. So you you will decide 
which format is the most suitable for the content that, you, that you're planning to work on that you may have already created. So there are two options really. Um, we've got journals, we've got books. Um, for journals, um, we've, it's, the, the content is very in-depth, it's knowledge on growing topics, it's specialised knowledge, um, very topic focused, in-depth discussions within journals, um, it's, you know, currency is incredibly important, um, and journals are a great vehicle for this, it's new research, it's recent findings, it's new techniques, and this is increasingly important to readership, uh, finding methods, particularly for experiments. Um, so, yeah, broadly, that those are the areas covered um, by by journals. In books, we've got interlinking disciplines um, and subjects, and it's comprehensively covered. Um, I would say, you know, perhaps more so than journals, go into greater depth. Got um, you know longer chapters usually, um, and within books, we can leverage new research, much more in depth much more of comprehensive coverage of the content. Uh, used as a learning tool, this is really important for Elsevier books. Um, that is it's one of their primary functions, uh, to be a learning tool for students and beyond. Also a very broad perspective, and that is important um, for us because you know we, we may have um, audiences, huge audiences who are coming to subjects as undergrads, um, you need that broad introduction to your subject areas, um, but also new approaches as well. Um, you know, covering new directions in knowledge, um, new discoveries. That's all very important for books. So yeah, those are the two main avenues for content, um, and each of them, you know, they're very valuable to search researchers. Um, at different moments of of their careers, or you know, within their research workflow. So we're going to dive, first of all, into journals. So I put this slide together just to show the different products um, that you know, are available within Elsevier. Um, so it's a summary of the different uh, product types. And this just gives you an outline to consider where you may want to publish. So at the very top of the, the pyramid, we We've obviously got uh, journals. So Elsevier, I should say, publishes over 3,000 journals in total across STM, science, technology, medicine, uh, medical coverage, and as well as the social sciences. So, um, you know, with it, just within journals alone, there's great opportunity to, um, to provide researchers with access to original research. It's written for experts, by experts. Uh, content you know, can be often granular and high level, and it's answering specific scientific questions. Um, just under that, we've got review journals, which, is, which are, provide um, a summary of journal articles on a topic. Uh, it's covering uh, the literature there. Beneath that, we've got book series, moving into the books area of Elsevier. We've, um, we've got book series and serials. So these provide researchers with an in-depth overview of a topic, um, you know, which are accessible for non-experts and interdisciplinary researchers you know, who may be going through an area for the first time. Um, for experts as well, they're a one-stop resource leading them uh, to an important new advances in the field. Oops, sorry. Okay, moving further down, we go into monographs, or, you know, more commonly today, we refer to them as ebooks. Um, you know, these are complete, advanced, detailed descriptions, providing real depth in subject areas. Um, we also have compendiums of information and data sets. Um, field or techniques. Um, and something that's really important is providing quick answers um, for people, for customers. Um, and Science Direct is such a, you know, a useful tool for this. Um, searchability is so important. Um, and then further down, textbooks. So we've got you know, pedagogy is extremely important here. 
um, a didactic presentation of key subject area content, concepts and methods, making it easily digestible, easily understood, um, customers, especially undergraduates. Um, further down, right at the bottom there, we've got reference, reference modules, major reference works. So major reference works are large multi-volume uh, titles. They can be between two volumes up to 26 volumes commonly. Huge, um, huge reference works which are incredibly popular. Um, and customers often, you know, go here for foundational um, introduction to a discipline. Um, and that's contained within um, two types of products within major reference works. They're comprehensives, which go, go into great detail on encyclopedias. Um, so, yeah, there's, there's plenty of choice here uh, depending on, on your needs. Okay, so moving on to publication within journals. So we've, you know, as I mentioned, we have thousands of elsewhere journals. How, how, how would you find the most suitable journal uh, for your content? So the simplest way is to use Journal Finder, um, which is our online tool, and it's powered by the Elsevier fingerprint engine. Um, it uses smart technology and field of research specific uh, vocabularies to match your article to Elsevier journals. So this will greatly help you um, to quickly identify which uh, journals could you know, potentially publish your content. So some tips here when you're you're and you know when you're um, using this uh, portal. Um, so when when it brings up the re the, the results um, of the journal's titles, um, what we would say is please read the aims and scope just to make sure it's a match um, to your content. Check whether you can submit. Uh, some journals are invitation only, so that's something to, to bear in mind. Um, use the journal metrics as well to understand the impact of a journal. And that may be you know, increasingly important uh, to researchers, the impact factor, um, but also other, other metrics as well. Um, and if available, check the journal at Journal Insights. That will give you additional information about impact, speed, and the reach of that particular journal. Um, so that's worth considering. And if you're a postdoc, check out our um, postdoc free access program as well. So there may be benefits within that for you um, to be useful for your, your career, for your research. Okay. Okay, so you've identified the journal. And so what happens next? Okay, so I put together a screenshot here of um, how to get published. So this is a quick guide. and It, it basically says, you know, does what it says on the tin, outlines the essential steps of preparing your paper. Um, and what I would say is very important to stick to the specifics, uh, try and adhere to the, you know, the guide for authors of the journal to which you're uh, submitting, because often they can be very different. Uh, and those, those guidelines will be, you can find the journal's uh, homepage. Um, do investigate the journal's aims and scope. That's important at what stage you're at. Um, I would say, please keep in mind um, adherence to publication ethics. What we want to do is avoid plagiarism of this work. Um, really want to avoid multiple publication of the same work. So please don't so please don't submit your manuscript to more than one journal at a time and just take it one step at a time. Cite and acknowledge other the works appropriately um, and only list co-authors who made major contributions. Illustrations, figures and tables um, are standard and the most efficient way to present your results. Um, we do have different resources here, which can make your life a lot easier. Um, if you need assistance with um, language editing, we do have the author services available, and these links um, will be available uh, in the slides, which you'll 
me to show it afterwards. Um, we've got Mandalay, which is an Elsevier product, which really helps to make um, life easier by helping you to organize your, your references, your papers, your citations. Um, those can be accessed on any kind of mobile device um, wherever you are, so it's uh, very accessible. And of course, open access, really important um, to Elsevier, particularly with journals. So Elsevier has a really broad choice of titles. Um, both open access and subscription. Um, if there's a particular journal that isn't fully open access, you've still got options. Um, so we have almost 2,000 journals at hybrid. Um, so you can choose to publish um, gold open access within them. And all our journals offer a green open access option, um, meaning that you can post a version of your article um, within a repository after an embargo. Um, so people can access it freely and um, encourage readership, encourage citations, which are incredibly important. Okay, so moving on to publication in journals, you've identified your journal. You now want to plan how to submit your, your content. So what to bear in mind is the submission. You can submit to most um, Elsevier journals using um, an online system. The system that you'll use will depend on the actual journal. So it's really important you'll see the submit your paper link on the journal's homepage. So click on that, follow uh, the process. When you've completed your submission, you'll receive an email with a reference number. And the reference number is really important because um, that will be identified with your particular article and that will give you the, the status of exactly where in the process your, your article is and what the next steps are. Um, if you need to submit a revised paper as a result of the peer review process, you can also do this in the, in the submission system as well. So peer review, um, the journal editor will make a first decision about your submission. Um, if it's suitable for the journal, the editor will send your manuscript to usually two, maybe possibly three reviewers, all experts in the field. The peer review process acts as a filter um, to ensure quality. Only good research is published and you know, improves um, the quality of research submitted for publication um, by giving you know, reviewers the opportun opportunity to suggest improvements to your article. Um, you can also volunteer to review um, at four specific journals as well, if this is of interest to you in your career. So, yeah, click on the review review hub, and that will take you through how to do this. Um, moving on to revision, so it's highly likely that if if your paper isn't rejected, you will be asked to revise it. Um, you will have an opportunity to improve your um, improve your paper, and considering the expert insights of the reviewers and the editors that have been provided. So this is an opportunity really to distill it provide a better version of your article and um, you know, really make the most of your invitation. Um, you'll also be able to respond to reviewer comments yourself, highlight, what, highlight where you've made any changes or even, you know, you may well disagree with the advice, which is perfectly fine. Um, so yeah, as we always say, try and take it calmly um, and just be prepared to justify your comments, which is perfectly reasonable. Um, we also have the article transfer service. So, yeah, by creating families of linked journals within various academic uh, fields, what we're trying to do is facilitate seamless transfer of articles between journals. So, this enables editors to identify and support, you know, possibly a more suitable home for a manuscript. And um, but it just means that authors don't have to go through the process of manually researching. It's, it's already done, so it doesn't take you back to square one. Um, if the transfer takes place post review, previous input from referees can will travel with the manuscript. Um, so that just ensures the contributions of reviewers are used to maximum effect. Um, so all parties benefit, you know, all from the insights and feedback that's already been shared. Okay, so publication in journals and uh, preparing your article for submission. No, oh, so sorry. I'm this slide. 
special issues. Okay, so as, as I mentioned previously, these are increasingly important, um, not only in journals, but also in uh, book series as well. So these focus on a specific area of research and uh, have a broad appeal and obviously fall within the aims and scope of the actual journal. Um, it provides a really good opportunity to, to review a particular theme, focus on one main theme. Um, it may, you know, for example, examine previously unaddressed aspects, propose and develop new approaches, exchange perspective, encourage new lines of research. Um, so if you do want to propose a new special issue and become a guest editor, please visit the, the chosen journal homepage and just read through the guidelines. There'll be instructions there. Um, on the bottom left here, the special issue browse tool. If you click on this, you can search um, for calls, um, for papers, for special issues um, that you may be interested in writing, uh, contributing towards. So what are the benefits of publishing in special issues? So you get the opportunities to publish with peers. You can harness your network, pull that together and submit. And um, you get excellent visibility within Science Direct. Um, so it's, you know, Science Direct provides access, it's incredible searchability, um, it's very quick timeliness to publication as well with Science Direct. Um, we've got positive citation impact. So special issues attract more citations in general in the first two years um, than articles published in regular issues. And part of this is because when people click on special issues, they can see links to other similar themed content as well. Um, and obviously the other articles within the special issue relate to this subject area as well. So usage and citations are really driven up. Um, there's wide readership. Um, Elsevier journals employ sophisticated technology to help optimize uh, searchability for published content. Um, so it ensures your issue and its contents are easily found by search engines such as Google. Got rigorous peer review. We have fast publication times. Special issues are often published more quickly than regular articles. Um, we have longer term impact your work. Special issues offer of longer term impact as your article collection. Uh, each readers will easily find your work. And career opportunities, this is obviously incredibly important for people submitting to journals. Um, working on a special issue as a guest editor, it's a great opportunity to connect further um, with a journal's network. And it's often a pathway to become you know, a member of the, the journal editorial board or team. Okay, moving on to books. So these are the types of books and subjects published by Elsevier. And you can see which ones here are growing in popularity and which ones areas in which Elsevier is a strong position. So the full STM uh, subjects offering from food science and food safety is incredibly important. That's growing in popularity right through to all the tr traditional areas such as chemistry and uh, life science through now to biomedical research. Also, science, social sciences are covered with economics. Um, we've got the handbooks in economics, um, which is um, a prestigious series. Um, we've got energy, transport, chemical engineering, neuroscience. We have material science and engineering. So as mentioned earlier, within the books division, we have major reference works. We have series, we've got serials, and serials, um, set of books with an unlimited number of volumes on broad topics um, and some of these series they go back to the 1950s a lot of, uh, a lot of Nobel Prize winners within them um, as I mentioned the handbooks and economic series that has over 40 uh, Nobel Prize winners who've contributed either as editors or, um, or as authors we have reference books on diverse subjects covered here and uh, these are developed graduate students and researchers and then right now to foundational content with uh, textbooks uh, for undergraduate students. 
Okay, so you've got your subject area in mind, you've got your book proposal, you've got, you know, to, to flesh out here. How, how do you go about approaching Elsevier to get your book published? Well, the first thing to do is to download our book proposal form, uh, which is easy, easily uh, located online. Complete this, uh, just to, so there's no surprises. The information requested, you know, will include definition of the topic, what the relevance is for the community, who who you think the readership are, um, benefits and special features that you you plan to include. So graphs, use cases, are incredibly important. Um, it's worth looking at your competitors as well to see what's out there already. Um, so do have a look, see who you know your potential book will be going up against. Um, then. What we need to do is receive a summary of your chapters, your plan chapters, your plan list of authors, and if you can provide a chapter titles, although at, at this point you, know, you may not have those fleshed out, especially if it's um, obviously an edited book. Um, but it's just something to keep in mind. That's that though that's the kind of information that uh, will be required um, by the editorial acquisition team and to help their decision making. So some top tips over on the right hand side, edited and authored books, multi-authored books. Um, there's a real preference by uh, readers for this, for edited works. Um, please keep in mind geographic diversity with edited books. Um, obviously, uh, diversity and inclusion is really important. So we want different perspectives from different countries. Um, it's really incredibly important and it, it really helps with, you know, with leveraging uh, the adoption of the book globally and uh, the usage. Reproduce, reproducibility of content, really important for scientists, for example, with experiments, trying to reproduce those. Study cases, real world examples, um, really help with particular students. There's no maximum number of pages um, and there's, there are no costs at all for editors and authors. Okay, so pu publication in books, preparing your manuscript for submission. So um, keep in mind the information here that we will need. Um, a title should be straightforward, should be assertive. Um, and this is really effect makes it effective for um, online search engines and your editorial team can help with this. Table of contents should be well organized, logical, based on the importance of the chapters for readability. Um, figures, illustrations of the missions. Um, we do require permissions to, to be completed. We can help with this. We do have um, people within the company who can provide guidance on this. And um, um, also, you know, for high resolution images, we ask for a minimum of 300 DPI. Um, Chapters, an average chapter should be between 8,000 and 10,000 words, and that um, equates to around 16 to 20 printed pages. Um, and in order to help discoverability, each chapter should contain an abstract. So it's a, it's a brief summary, usually of 100 to 150 words, um, a list of up to five to 10 keywords, which, you know, um, are relevant to the content of the chapter, and that really helps with discoverability. <clears throat> um, what your use as a book author is um, a, a system called ELSA. And, um, this is an online system. <clears throat> it's entirely um, created and owned by Elsevier, and this is to help authors. It's a real benefit. It's an authoring tool um, that streamlines the um, writing process for you and your contributors. Um, it really helps with collaborating with your peers, project members, um, and it's also a project management tool as well. It will help you to just manage the whole process more easily. Um, yeah, benefits, you, you can spend more time writing, less time formatting, helps you stay organized, and it really helps you to collaborate and um, work with your colleagues more easily, so that's really important to us. Okay, moving on to the editorial and publishing processes. So this is really important to us in Elsevier. Um, 
we've got stringent copy editing and proofreading processes. Um, after the, the complete manuscript is submitting, submitted, the text will be read, corrected carefully and sensitively uh, to improve readability. Um, Typesetting, so we have internal designs which are selected, and those are applied throughout uh, the chapters with consistency. Um, the cover, so the cover gets started uh, well in advance of publication and uh, design team work with you to help to put that together to properly advertise the book. Um, editors and authors were actively involved in the process by selecting cover images and approving layouts, which is a really important part of the process. But for proofs, editors and authors are requested to take a final look at the content before sending it to print. And um, before that, obviously, authors and editors will receive proofs for checking. Um, and there's different options available, uh, different formats from PDF to online. Um, in order to submit any corrections that may be needed. And yeah, final check will be done before sending to press and our books obviously are available in print and uh, digital um, at the same time. Okay, so that brings my presentation to an end. So as I mentioned, these are all the useful uh, links which we can send around and uh, distribute to you. And uh, but if you do have any questions, I'll be very happy to take those right, right now. Hi, Jason. I do have uh, one question here for you on the Q and A. So, Jerry Kinkor asked, "I I intend to get my book about F A Jakes. I hope I'm pronouncing all Hakes. Thought in example on the border of philosophy economics." published in the US and distributed by Amazon. Would Elsevier be an option for B? Yeah, I think it would. But um, what I would say, Jerry, is to, I hope I said it correctly there, um, please fill in the book proposal form and uh, give us some additional information. Um, that would be really useful. We do work with Amazon. Elsevier um, does distribute via Amazon as well. Um, customers can purchase off Amazon or other third party platforms as well as um, elsewhere.com. Um, so, my answer would be to encourage you to complete the book proposal form and um, submit that. And uh, obviously, that will be considered by the relevant acquisition editor. Let me see if i find any other question uh any other question please send by q a i see some questions regarding the recordings yes you are gonna have the recordings after the session in a follow-up email that will gonna be sent to you and also you can download your certificates for the session as well so both of them you will receive the instructions in a couple of days um any other Question to Jason. Oh, here, then we have one. Is it normal to uh, still not have a reviewer assigned to my paper five months after submission? Well, that seems quite a lengthy time to me. Um, is it normal? I would say, well, my gut reaction is that it's not, not normal. It seems quite um, a lengthy time, personally. Um, it's usually a quicker process for this on the majority of journals, in my experience. Um, there is normally a standard time frame um, for, for getting those out quickly, and receiving them quickly. So, um, yeah, I would say please get in contact with your, your editorial, your journal's editorial contact, and um, just use them to find out what is going on if that is um, if that is a current situation. Good, thank you. Um, Kota is, um, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing your name correctly. He's uh, asking where is the form to the book proposal? This will also be sent to you in the presentation, the whole presentation with all those bunch of links that Jason shared. This will be also available to you so you can benefit from all the links, not only the book proposal, but all the to the support tools that uh, he mentioned during the presentation. 
Anything else? Many thanks from the people. Let's see. How one, uh, this is a good one. How one should select uh, the best topic for publication? Yeah, okay. So, I mean, I would have a look at the journals in the area that you're interested in publishing and you'll be able to see the metrics. Um, you know, for example, most downloaded articles, um, articles with high citations. Um, have a look at those and, and that may be, may be able to inform uh, your decision making. Jason, if I if I may actually give uh, some other tip, uh, I would say use SiteDirect for it because you you all have access to SiteDirect, I believe. If you don't, let us know. But uh, in SiteDirect.com, you will see the most popular articles. For example, this could be um, a great tool for you also to get to know what people are interested in reading, what are the, uh, the publishers doing. So I think it can be a very great way. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I think that's a, a really important way of finding out. And also maybe reach out to the editorial board and they may be able to give you guidance as well. Um, I don't know, Mohamed, you're asking to write in the chat the name, the name of what, the science direct name? It's my pleasure. This is something you must know. Most of you has uh, have access to it through your um, universities or even consortia. So, yeah, because you are from many countries, so I cannot speak from everyone, especially the ones out of my territory, but um, try sitedirect.com. Even if you don't have uh, access to it, you will you can benefit from a lot of open access content and you can get to know, you can see still the most popular articles, even you cannot read it. And you can always talk to your library and ask, we would love to provide if you don't have access to your library. So ask them to call us and then we can set up an agreement. Um, there is one more question here. Books is on English. What above our native language? Do I have to translate the book by myself? Well, I, my understanding, Chris, you may both be able to help me out as well, but we also push in different languages. Um, certainly Spanish is a huge um, language area for publication. Um, so it's not just English, also Chinese as well, I believe. Um, but Chris, do you have any other information? No, actually, I would uh, get the ball back to you because I know most of our books are are indeed in English. I know there is uh, from the Latin America team. I know there are some effort to to push some um, some books in. Yeah, from there, but I'm not sure if uh, Spanish would be it. Um, I can try to find this information and get back to you. But what uh, I think, Jason, um, we do have this the service from from translation. So yeah, this is we can always you can always write down in your native language because this is will be obviously easier yeah. for you. Mm -hmm. And right. then uh, perhaps ask for some translation and this. For the book size, uh, right, Jason, we do have this service as different as, as an article that we yes. can support you with the reviewing and all this. So um, for the, the books, as you said, I think it's more, e it's easier for the the known uh, speaker, speaker uh, native speakers to, to publish than an article, maybe. Absolutely, I agree with all those points and we can help with, um translation we can help with language editing as well that's really important for us to be able to offer that as a service so yeah, yeah. Please, please don't let that be a barrier uh, to publication yeah perhaps jason the first uh one first step would be submit the proposal in english which would be short and then perhaps it can be discussable right if uh, yeah. depending the language and and how how to manage the the language yeah uh, let's see, I've seen something else. Uh, do you see the change of the language authors used in their publication in the last 15 years from those 
third person and passive voice to first person and active voice? And is it better? Interesting one. <laughs> Very copywriting. <laughs> uh, I don't think there's been a huge change myself but if you need help with that obviously editing can provide that during the production stages but um what i would say is maybe provide a sample chapter you know along with your book proposal form um and uh, your editorial contacts will be able to advise you about that um yeah but yeah, I haven't seen a significant change over the last 15 years myself uh, with that respect. Um, there is uh, one question, I think, about Science Direct uh, and author saying uh, that um, I don't see your name. Uh, Gordana, I think. Um, Gordana is not searching from a new institution. Gordana, I would say very generic answer about it but i think you could definitely use some university campus for example to search uh again science direct you can benefit from open access at whatever is open access you you'll be able to read it and we have uh, more than 1.5 million of articles you can see it books unfortunately are not open access but i think if you go to to some institution in your in your town that have access to it, you can you can also uh, access the content. I, I I don't think the library will deny your your entrance. Um, let me see if I see any other. Uh, what's your opinion about the future of Open Chat G GTI, which writes articles instead of humans? Polemic <laughs> question. <laughs> yeah, that's just really topical at the moment. Um, so in January, Elsevier published a nursing article that was the co-author was Chat GPT. Um, so it's it really is becoming something that is making an impact in um, academic publishing. Elsevier does have um, guidance on this, and it's. We do have links available to give people advice about using chat GPT or any other artificial intelligence system. So what I would say is um, just have a check of those um, and just see um, what the guidelines are. Yeah, Jason, just to also to add on, on your answer, because I've been searching a little more about it. Um, what, what I do know is you can use the 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 chat like gpt for uh supporting you in in summarizing maybe or even finding some content but you will be all always responsible for your article so because we we had this um this fact in in the past jason you you must be aware that uh, an author managed uh it was i think the first case uh to put a chat gpt as co-author of an article and that was yeah. actually published i think it got everyone a surprise and then but immediately obviously there was a um a review on this and this author had to take it out the name of chat gpt as co-authorship because a human being should be responsible for it i mean i think it's not something we can run away from so use it, but you will be responsible for that information. So you should double check as everything you research. Exactly, yeah. as Veronica just put, uh, there are many errors on the on the chat. Um, yeah, in the bibliographic list. So I mean, if it's useful for you for give it some taste, yeah, it's fine, but uh, you will be responsible for that information. So think about it. Uh, yeah, I think, um, oh, Elena, my colleague, thank you, Elena. He's actually correcting me. I said there is no books. When I say no books, there's not a lot of books, but we do have seven books in open access that, uh, for example, researchers as uh, Gordana can benefit from. Yeah, that's correct. Um, open access in books is, a, is an option. Um, it's, it's not, um, obviously, it's nowhere near on the scale of open access in journals, but it's just, if people do want to pursue open access in books, 
um, please do check online. Um, there are certain uh, subject areas that can be pushed up for public access in, in books. Oh, that is cool. Um, let me see. Oh, there are a bunch of more questions. Um, is it compulsory to put more references from the publisher we are about to send for the journal or books? Like, if it's Elsevier, should we only uh, use uh, Elsevier journals, for example? Well, no, I would say please do, you know, put your references as, as fairly as possible um, according to your sources that have been used. Um, no, there shouldn't, you know, um, just... Um, Include other, obviously include other publishers, that's important. Do you have any source recommendation for literature reviewing writing? Ah, yeah, okay. I would say contact your ed ed editorial contact person or, you know, fill in the book proposal form and once you're contacted back, they'll be able to provide um, a guidance document for you to be able to do that. And there, there will be author guidelines for doing this. Okay, thank you. One more here. Um, I saw some of the journal articles are clubbed together and published as a book. Uh, how are the articles are being selected for those kind of books? Ah, okay, so you may be talking about serials, possibly. Um, and those are serial articles that are produced as books, um, and those are curated by editors. So for every serial, there are serial editors who, you know, they can recruit um, volume editors um, and they will choose subject areas from which to, um, you know, they will decide on the contents, they'll decide on the authors, they'll decide on the chapter titles, etc. And that, that's how serials are curated, basically. All right. Um, can a doctoral thesis written in one language be published as a book in another language, or it is considered self-plagiarism? <laughs> yeah, I mean, written in one language. I presume you're saying it's a doctoral thesis. It's not been published elsewhere previously, but you want to publish it in another language. Um, no, that, that, that does happen. Um, that's absolutely fine. Um, just as long as it's not been published elsewhere, and just as long as, you know, the rights, copyright to it is assigned to one publisher only, that, you know, that is absolutely fine. Yeah, just a, an interesting um, mention here in the chat, uh, Jason, that uh, there is a... a an author saying that he's he tired and has no money for publishing so let's just put emphasis that the books there are no charge for books right publication and not even for journals if it's not open access if you can perhaps speak a little more about it yeah well, i'm with that exactly exactly that uh, there are no upfront charges and for books um in fact you know authors editors receive an honoraria um, in return, they also receive a share link. They can distribute their chats as free to as many people in their network or contacts online, uh, free for 50 days. Um, for authors, there's also a 30% discount of all elsewhere titles. Um, so, yeah, there, there, there are those benefits uh, as well, being a contributor, being an editor as well. Yeah. So, there are possibilities to everyone, right? Yeah, exactly. And uh, also complimentary copies um, for, for editors. It's usually a print copy plus um, electronic copy um, and for authors, uh, usually electronic copy, um, just depending on the, on the publication itself. Okay, I think we have the, the last one, Not last but not least. Uh, what should be given by an author in the field for any <clears throat> comments to the editors? Uh, comments to the editors. As we are uh, attaching a cover letter to the editor, apart from this, what we are supposed to mention in that field? Okay, you may want to um, provide an abstract. You might want to just prepare, um, you know, a summary of what's um, within your article, uh, what's covered, 
and um, why it's important. Um, so yeah, I would I would say that's 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 um, a good place to start with a, a letter. All right, thank you so much. I don't see any more questions, and uh, we have uh, like um, five minutes to go. So I will would like to thank you very very much, uh, our. Uh, main special guest, Jason Mitchell. Thank you for being here this morning with us or afternoon. I know there are people in the afternoon zone already. Uh, and thank you especially to the still 170 people that are still here. So we hope this content was helpful for you. Um, please keep, uh, keep uh, again, just you have certificates, presentation, uh, recordings, everything delivered to you in a couple of days and keep track in our Eastern Europe um, webinar hub. We are preparing a bunch of nice presentations for the second semester, just as like this one, and maybe some other colleagues from publishing and lots of nice day, um, topics to come. So yeah, I'll keep you posted. Thank you so much. And I hope to see you soon. Thank you, Chris. Thank you to everybody.